we look at the fascinating similarities between the structures in the cosmos and in our brains, we have to ask ourselves, do we live in someone's head? Why are brain cells similar to the universe? Two Italian researchers investigated this question and came to an astonishing conclusion. If we look at the structures of the cosmos and our own nervous system, we find almost unbelievable similarities. On a macroscopic level, clusters of galaxies mirror the networks of our neurons while filaments and voids in the cosmic structure are reminiscent of the connections between nerve cells. Like neurons communicating through synaptic connections, galaxies in the universe interact through gravitational forces. The cosmic web thread is similar to axons, which transport information over great distances. The development of structures in the cosmos shows parallels to neurogenesis, or in other words, the development of our nervous system and our brain. Stars and neurons experience complex processes that are similar. It's incredible what the hierarchy of the entire cosmic structures mirrors the organization of our nervous system from the smallest units to complex networks. Could this be a coincidence or is this similarity trying to tell us something specific that we have overlooked in our research so far? You and I are perhaps one brain cell in a big something that we call the universe. Our brains and bodies may also contain tiny, intelligent units that perceive themselves as alive, free, and unique. Yet to us, they are nothing more than nerve cells or blood particles. Scientists have the proof. The fascinating similarities between the brain and the universe have been noticed by an astrophysicist and neurosurgeon from Italy. Franco Vazza from the University of Bologna and Alberto Folletti from the University of Verona presented a joint paper in November 2022 that is bound to wake us up. These similarities are no coincidence. They take us to the limits of physics and bring us into contact with completely new dimensions. Vatsa and Folletti state in their paper that the human brain contains approximately 69 billion neurons, while the observable universe contains an estimated 100 billion galaxies. In the entire universe, galaxies make up 30% of the total mass. In the brain, neurons make up this 30% share. Galaxies and neurons are arranged in a similar way along cosmic branching filaments. The remaining 70% of the mass consists of water in the brain and presumably dark energy in the cosmos. In cosmology, spectral density indicates the spatial distribution of galaxies, and here too, the researchers found clear similarities. The human brain has an average volume of just over one liter while the universe contains over 9,000 billion trillion cubic light years. There are overwhelming differences in size between the universe and a human brain, yet both systems are similar in terms of complexity and self-organization. The similarity of the structures is staggering. We find these similarities between microcosm and macrocosm time and again in the universe. For example, researchers claim to have discovered that the distances between the atomic nucleus and the electrons and neutrons in some elements corresponds exactly to the distances between the planets and the sun. The universe is a living organism. Just 100 years ago, scientists thought that the universe was a rigid structure, similar to a room in which stars and planets are suspended. A lot has happened since then. We now know that nothing in the universe is fixed and constant. All matter spins and rotates or flies at incredible speeds through the space we know as the universe. Yet these speeds are small compared to the overall size, perhaps no different to the natural vibration of your cells. We now know that we are at home on one of many trillions of planets. All these planets have a star and star systems form galaxies. Galaxies form groups and migrate along filaments through the cosmos. Sometimes they meet, merge, graze, or repel each other, just as certain cells or units in our bodies merge with others, while others merely pass by or even repel each other. Groups of galaxies form gigantic galaxy clusters, and these belong to even larger structures. If we take the known structures in the universe together and create a map, images emerge that are clearly reminiscent of organic structures. Let's be honest, if you didn't know that you were looking at a map of the structures of our universe, you would think of an anatomical illustration, wouldn't you? The images are somewhat reminiscent of the ear with the cochlea and the ossicles, the cross-section of a joint with muscle fibers, or even images of the nervous system from the anatomy atlas. 
The similarities are so striking that we can hardly assume that the universe is an inanimate entity. What is behind these uncanny similarities? What do you think is behind these similarities? Pure coincidence? Or does it tell us more? In their work, the Italian researchers, Vazza and Filetti, come to the conclusion that, from a purely scientific point of view, these similarities merely indicate that the structures are formed by the same physical principles. The ancient scholar Hermes Trismegistos expressed something very similar in the Hermetic Laws. The motto, as within, so without, and as above, so below, was intended to point out to people that the systems found within us can also be found outside, in nature, and in the cosmos. So are we basically seeing proof here of an intelligent blueprint for the universe? And do we only need to look inside ourselves if we want to understand the cosmos out there? What is striking, apart from the similarity of the structures and organic forms in the universe, is the high level of connectivity within the two networks. Everything in the universe is networked along the filaments and countless structures in the cosmic tissue, just as nerve cells are networked in our bodies. Your nervous system conducts impulses from the brain to the body and organs. The organs respond in their own way, and the brain can thus regulate your metabolism, the growth and renewal of your cells, or even your blood pressure. It is still a wonder how our bodies do this, and where the information that makes our bodies grow or regulates our heartbeat actually comes from. If we believe the principles of ancient scholars and sages, the same intelligence that creates our bodies and keeps them alive should also be responsible for the creation of the universe. Presumably, information such as nerve impulses also travels along the structures in the universe. But where does this information come from, and who sends it? Is it all just a crazy game? Imagine you look up at the sky and see clouds forming shapes. Perhaps these shapes look like an elephant or a heart. Now imagine that the sky is infinitely large and there are an infinite number of clouds that can form all kinds of shapes. Ludwig Boltzmann, a clever physicist, considered that in a huge, infinite universe with many, many particles, things could sometimes arise by chance, like these shapes in the clouds. He even considered that our brains were not created for some higher reason, but purely by such a coincidence or whim of the universe. The Boltzmann Paradox says that if the universe is really so vast and there are infinite possibilities, then it could be that a brain or even a complete head could just come into existence by some crazy chance. It would be as if a fully functioning brain just appeared out of nowhere for no reason. Our idea is that everything must always have a reason or that structures and physical laws have absolute validity, play a subordinate role in such a cosmos. In Boltzmann's cosmos, there is more chaos and disorder than rationally comprehensible laws. Perhaps our existence and all the crazy similarities between the universe and the brain resemble a chaotic game. In the late 19th century, Ludwig Boltzmann conducted intensive research into the question of how the universe works and whether it's perhaps even intelligent. If we were to assume that the universe is intelligent and alive, as we think of ourselves, this would mean an enormous change. If we see the universe not as a dark space with inanimate matter, but as a living organism that is just as intelligent as we are, we cannot expect the cosmos to always be rational and explainable with mathematical formulas. Look at yourself. Your body functions according to the rules of biology and chemistry, and you move according to physical quantities. But you are also confused, chaotic, imaginative, and sometimes unpredictable. Boltzmann realized that our existence and our brains could have originated from such a crazy idea of the universe. The similarities would then be pure coincidences, which could be explained by the fact that the universe shapes its randomly conceived components from time to time according to similar patterns, or invents new ones as it pleases. Everything could then just be a crazy game, but we humans don't want to accept this. We search and search for meaning and for rules that we can understand and follow. Are we living in a simulation? The latest findings in quantum physics go even further. They say that chaos and order are only two possible states in a cosmos of infinite possibilities. We ourselves may even be the creators of the universe. This could mean that we ourselves created the similarities of the universe with our brains in order to recognize ourselves in them and not that the universe created us. The US philosopher Nick Bostrom formulated a thesis known as the simulation argument. 
The thesis states that life and universes can be created by technologically and mentally enormously advanced civilizations. These beings would be able to create complex simulations that are perceived as real by the entities living in them. The second assumption is that such simulations would become more numerous over time. In practical terms, this means that the wealth of possibilities in such a world would become ever greater. The third assumption argues that if it is possible to create such simulations in the future, the probability that we will find ourselves in one of them is close to one. This can mean two things. First, that we are in a simulation created by other entities and we are experiencing what those entities want us to experience. Somewhere, the programmers of the game may be having a heap of fun watching us ponder the similarity between the brain and the universe. And basically, this is nothing more than a breadcrumb being held out to a mouse in an attempt to lure it in a certain direction. An extension of the model envisages that we ourselves are possibly these high beings or are on par with them. We just don't yet perceive ourselves that way. This means that we too are creators and that we create reality every day. When we realize this one day, we will be able to control our creation and possibly create worlds in which beings live who ask themselves questions like these. Subscribe to the channel now. There are many more exciting videos to come.